beautiful people. We have Towns Van Zant's If I Needed You. Really pretty song. It's a great lesson and study in melody because the bulk of it is just on a G chord. And it's how much you can do with changing the melody notes, the, the phrasing, the syncopation, hammer-ons, uh, really cool stuff all just happening on the G chord and he keeps it interesting. Most people would bore you to death vamping on a G that long. There is a quick C and a quick D, but what we're really gonna focus on in this piece is when to lift uh, melody notes and the left hand, because often it doesn't happen on the chord. So sometimes you might want to, you know, on the first beat or when your thumb hits a note, you'll wanna trigger one of these fingers to move, but there's all these these melody lines that hold over a little longer than you think. In order to get this full, rich sound, you really wanna be very careful of when you're lifting and moving them. So we'll talk a lot about that. And let's do it. Sorry guys, capo four. I did not do my capo this whole time. On the album version, it's capo four. There's some live versions where he's up on the fifth fret, but learn it without the capo and then throw it on the fourth fret, makes it the key of E, key of B, key of whatever, you guys don't care. You're just picking, but capo four. You'll be okay, you'll live, don't get mad at me. Are you mad? Are you unsubbing? Oh, all my precious subscribers. The first measure is a pickup beat, just three and four. We have a G chord, just the third fret on the low string. I'm hitting six and the third string together. And then the thumb is on the fourth and then my melody notes on the second. And that's it, one, two, three, four. First full measure, we have a G chord, but right at the beginning we have a hammer on. I'm hitting six string and second. The second's open, but I'm hammering my first finger right off, right at the beginning. So those two are together, six and two. Then the thumb goes to the fourth string, back. So that's the beginning, right first half of that measure. back on six, it's six, second string open, fourth string, third string open. So the ending is just that, six, two, four, three. So together we have the hammer on. Pay very careful attention to when you lift that first finger. You wanna do it at the last moment possible. So sometimes, Sometimes the tendency is to lift it when you play the thumb, but you want to hold it down a little longer. Right there, right? Play it. Lift. And you want to train that first finger to lift at the right time. You don't want it to trigger on the wrong finger. Second measure. It starts off, first half is just six, two, four, three. Right all on just that G chord with that one finger down. Six, two, four, three. Second half is six and two together. Then immediately we play the, the end beat on the first fret of the second string. Happens pretty quick. And then the thumbs alone on the fourth string. So six and two together. Two alone, but with the first finger down on the first fret. Thumb alone on the fourth string. Three and four, three and four. So that entire measure. Here we have the third measure, still a G chord. It starts with the pinky down on the third fret of the second string. So we have six and two together, both third frets, thumbs alone, then third string is open. So it's one, two, and, one, two, and. Second half is sixth string, then the melody note is the first fret of the second string, thumb alone. So it's just three and four, six, two, down on the second string. So let's pay careful attention to when we move that pinky to that first fret. It's not on the thumb, you wanna hit it, move it only right before you're about to play that note. So one, two, and three, and four. So it's on the end of that third beat. Together, two, and three, and four. Then you really 
we get that really smooth, melodic, singerly kind of line up on top. Da, 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 da. I think the tendency for most people, myself included, if I'm not careful, is I will lift right when I play it on the downbeat, but then you have that moment of dead space where you want that pinky singing. I'll really exaggerate the sound there. Right, da, da. The last second I'm lifting that pinky right before I have to play that melody note. Fourth measure is pretty straightforward here. Uh, six and two, right, just the G chord again. Thumb on the fourth. Then six and two again, but I hammer onto the first fret. Thumb alone. That's it. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Fifth measure, we're gonna get that really smooth melody on top. So we have third fret down on the second string with the pinky, and you're playing six and that second string together. Thumb alone, that's it. Then it does six and two again. And our melody note is on the open on the first string. So we have one thumb alone. So it's one, two, three, and four, and so the the four was just that thumb alone on the fourth string, and then we move to the first fret on the second string. So six and two, fourth string, six and two, first string string, fourth string, and then first fret, second string. And again, we don't want to lift that pinky till the last moment. One, two, three, and four, and only on the end of four am I lifting that pinky. One, two, three, and four, and da, da, da. This next part might trip you up for a second. We have a chord change to a C chord and our thumb pattern is a little more involved. We're gonna do fifth string, third, hammer on the fourth, open to two, and then the third string again. Fifth, third, fourth string, third. Now the in-between notes are the first uh, string. So five, open on the first, then second string, uh, first fret for that C chord. That's the first half of that measure. Second half is the hammer on. Oh, so a hammer on and then the thumb alone. So fourth string hammer on open to two, thumb alone on three. Now remember that first finger we want to hold down from the previous chord. So when you put them together, you have so we get that C from the previous measure of the G chord, that first fret there, and it stays down. Right? And I move to the C chord of these other two fingers while that melody note is still ringing. practice those two measures nice and smooth. This measure here is very easy. We go to a D chord. We don't need the high E string, so I'm just doing two and three here. So it's thumb on the fourth, thumb on the third, then the and is the second string. One, two, and. Then the second half is open on the fifth string, and then Thumbs playing the third string, and then open on the second. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, it sounded weird to my ear, but that's it in context. So, four, third, second, fifth, third, second, thumb, thumb, and thumb, thumb, and. There, I did it wrong. <laughs> So again, I lifted those too soon, right? Sometimes the tendency is to, well, I'm changing chords, so I've got to lift everything. But you're not gonna get that smooth sound we've been talking about. 
You can even stagger how you lift those if you really want it to be as smooth as possible. Lift the third, then lift the second. To get everything as smooth and long as connected as possible. That's actually a really good one to practice. So I'm lifting index and then my ring finger. Here we go again. Index middle. Last two measures are just G and no other fingers. It's just how you stagger the right hand. That's it. So we have thumb going back and forth the whole time. One, two, and is the third string. One, two, and three, and is the second string. Four, and back to the third. So the melody there is, is uh, third, second, third. But the rhythm is one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. The following measure continues the final pattern where it's six, two, four, three. Six, two, four, three. Then that second half of that last measure, six, two, four. So six, two, four, three, six, two, four. Six, two, four, three, six, two, four. The rhythm there is um, one and two and three and four. A little confusing, but put those two measures together so you've got the, the weird count in your head. One, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So everything has an and except the very first beat and then the, the eighth beat, right? The fourth beat of the second measure. One, two and three and four. It's always staggering. Third, second, third, second, third, second. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. That wasn't too bad. You're doing great. This is one for some reason. It's it's not really complicated, but it's hard to memorize. Uh, the melody is it's like really pretty and smooth, but it doesn't totally stand out as like something you would sing. So at least me personally, I have a hard time remembering like, well, where's the hammer? When does he lift it on the open beat? So I, I haven't memorized it. Um, I'm still kind of looking at the tab. Um, so I recommend doing that at first. And there's other techniques like with, with uh, kids, and it works for my adult students too, is to come up with like a goofy sentence. My goofy sentences are always food related sentences. And that can help you uh, memorize a rhythm. So let me give you an example. So let's say you're having trouble with that first full measure. I would sing the, well, I know the thumb's doing this. So I'm gonna give myself words for that, the melody, right? I like ice cream. I like ice cream. Something about having words puts the phrase more concretely in your mind. I like ice cream. That's way better than, oh, it goes da 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 da. Because without words, you're gonna forget it in a second. But if you have the phrasing and syllables, I like ice cream, I like ice cream. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it works and you'll, you'll learn these things faster, I promise. To put it in a bigger context, we'll do that second measure. Without sprinkles, without sprinkles. So you don't have to always do the melody notes. Um, but that's how I do it, because if you're counting all the bass notes too, you're gonna have a million words and super long sentences. But we have, I like ice cream without sprinkles. It's easier to memorize. Uh, now, I, now I know it, now I'm memorizing it. See, it works. I like ice cream without sprinkles. First two measures down, beautiful. I like ice cream without sprinkles. As simple as that, a kid could learn this song. You're pathetic, how long have you been practicing this song? And a small little child, my three-year-old boy, he's not even three, he's two, almost three. I like ice cream without sprinkles. It's that simple, you idiot. You've been working on the song, trying to finger pick it all week long. And then I, you know, my little boy beat you to the punch. Just a simple little sentence, you doofus. All right, I love you, I'm just joking, I'm just, but use this method, it works. Try it out, let me know what you think, comment below. 
All right, here's this entire thing, nice and slow, really focus on getting the nice legato lines happening here. One, two, three.